Hey everyone, thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today we're going to be looking at macro level movements in Bitcoin and looking at the, the Golden Cross um, that is about to happen and also just get a feel for the for the bigger picture for those people who are, are, are continuing to dollar cost average their way into Bitcoin. Um, and, and might be getting a little little fearful over over this move. So let's back up again. I want to I want to show you know historically around the time we have golden crosses, it's not that unheard of um, to have to have you know these pullbacks. And you can see around this other golden cross over here, we had a had a ten percent pullback. Um, and then currently around the current golden cross, we're already at around a, an eight um, to nine percent pullback. Um, I should also mention that if you guys uh, want to follow along in the community that, that uh, follows me on YouTube, uh, then check out the Telegram channel in the description below. Um, we have around 1,700 people and there's a lot of good discussions in there, so, so feel free to join that. Um, and please subscribe to the channel too. Um, so anyways, uh, you, know, you can see that these pullbacks aren't necessarily you know, that, that novel. And, and even, even if we go back to say 2015, you know, again, we can see similar type moves at this golden cross, which corresponded to um, uh, this accumulation phase. Um, oh, sorry about that. Uh, let me scroll down here. Um, so we had this golden cross here. Uh, we did see a pullback, and it was because we were still accumulating. Um, we did not really proceed to to continue to go to lower lows. It was just kicking the can down a road down the road in a sense. Um, so here you can see if we take a measured move, here we came down around 15%. We had another golden cross here, um, and not too long later we had a had a fairly um, uh, strong correction. So if we even if we just take it from say like the candle um, down here, it's it's around a 25% loss. So these things aren't necessarily novel, and if we if we go all the way up to the top, it was around a 37% loss. Um, I don't think that Bitcoin has ever seen a a fifty percent loss once it's actually in the bull market. So once the twenty week moving average is held as support, um, I don't think we have ever experienced a fifty percent loss. I mean, I could be wrong about that, but just if we were to take a few measured moves um, back in in the last bull market, let me move myself over here so I can auto this. Um, so if we look here at this last bull market, you can see that we had, um, so we're, we're gauging the 20 week as the start of the bull market. So holding that 20 week moving average is our bull market. So here you can see from, from this peak down to the bottom, we dropped 21%. Um, from this peak to the bottom, 28%. Uh, let's say this peak down basically to the 20 week moving average, another 24% here. 26%. Again, here we were 36%, um, around 36%. And then once we peaked, we actually broke that 20 week moving average. And you can see that it actually corresponded to a 50% drop. And the minute we had that 50% drop and came down to the 20 week moving average, ultimately we transitioned into um, uh, the bear market. So essentially you could you could say okay once the 20 week moving average is broken it's probably safe to say that the, that the party's over. Um, so here you know we were we were essentially in this phase of okay we're above the 20 week there was a lot of bullish um, sentiment in the market um, but like last time we didn't hold the 20 week the first time we tested it like in 2015 we didn't hold it you can see we we came we tried to hold it and then we dropped below and then we were off to the races um so you know if you look at this at this move i you know i've said we're not in the in a bull market because we weren't able to hold the 20 week and i think historically the 20 week is a good indicator um if we were just to take a, a move from the top of this candle down to um, uh, let's say down here, we're already looking at a at a forty one percent loss. But if you take it from the from the peak of of this wick, um, sorry about that. So if you take it from the peak of this wick up here, it is actually over a fifty percent loss. And of course, we also did not hold the twenty week moving average. So we're starting to move above it. And you can see that we have had a, a small correction here. And I mean, it, it could become a larger correction. Um, 
but it might not. I mean, it, you know, we, we might just continue trending upward. And again, I would remind people that this is not, this channel is not meant for day trading. It is meant just for, for longer term analysis for people who are, say, dollar cost averaging their way into the market. Um, you know, you know, various metrics that you can use to try to identify, um, you know, good, potentially good entry points, uh, considering historical data. So we, we look at things from a data science perspective. Um, we don't just, you know, draw lines on the chart, like saying, oh, look, we must be going up. Um, we don't do that here. Uh, so let's, um, let's move on. We've, so we've talked about the 20 week. Let's, you know, here, um, we are about to have this, this golden cross. So, and, and, and also I should, you know, I should mention too, that it's, it's notable that we are about to enter, um, the happening as well. So if you, if you look at this from a macro level perspective, so if we zoom way out, um, if we, if we zoom like very far out, let me delete all these so that you can actually see what's going on here. It kind of, it really puts things into perspective. So the yellow lines are the halvings and let's also remove the price because essentially the price is just noise and it's irrational noise. Um, what we care about is this longer term trend. So you can see that, you know, between, you know, before, before the halvings, um, we've had a peak followed by a bear market. Um, and then moving into the, into the halving, we've, we've started our, our uptrend. Um, we've had a, a peak and then followed by a, a bear market. And then about, you know, moving into the halving, we had this uptrend. This is the 20 week moving average, by the way, this is not the price. So if you're thinking like, oh, this doesn't make complete sense because I've seen this before, this is not the price. It's just the 20 week moving average, which is a pretty good indication of what the price is doing. If the 20 week moving average is going up, um, monotonically, then the price is also generally going up and you kind of filter out all those 10% losses, 40% gains, all that becomes just noise. Um, so you can see again, after the halving, we had a peak a bear market. Um, we started moving up and the 20 week, has recently it started to to shift into moving up again so essentially if we were to take the time derivative of this moving average it would show a um a, a change in slope from negative to positive so historically um now obviously we can't say for sure but historically this this moving average tends to to start really increasing going into the halving and we recently just barely started um uh increasing over here so I, I would like you guys to consider this. Try to, you know, if you're if you're on TradingView or, or another platform, it's it's helpful sometimes, um, no matter what asset you're looking at, to just remove the price and just look at the averages. Um, it tells a different story, and and it's helpful for identifying longer term momentum shifts and decent times to enter the market. Um, for instance, you know, at, if you look at the 20 week moving average. Um, you know, it, it, you can definitely see these valleys that form after these peaks in the market cycle. And, uh, you know, you could say that hindsight's 2020, but we, you know, we were also talking in terms of the risk indicator. All right, guys, the risk is 0.2 or 0.3. And historically at the peak, it's 0.9 or one, you know, this is historically speaking, this would be a great buy-in, um, opportunity. So let's look at another moving average. Let's look at the 50, the 50 week kind of tells a similar story. Um, you can see that we have a, we kind of have a peak and then we, we have a, a bear market and, and notice that it is a, a little bit lagging here. It is the 50 week. Um, and then we, we increase move moving into the having, okay. Bull market, bear market, increase going into the having bull market, bear market, increase going into the having. And remember if the 50 week moving average is monotonically increasing, then the price is generally increasing. You might be pulling your hair out over these over these short term moves where you where you think, oh no, the price decreased ten percent or the price decreased even thirty percent, um, and and people get fearful. But if imagine if if you were the person who bought Bitcoin, you know back in in say August of two thousand and ten or or you know at at any point over here. If you were the one worried and, and pulling your hair out over these over these moves, which I should say that I mean some of these moves here are are a lot more significant. I mean you can't even hardly see the current move that we're in compared to some of these other um, corrections, even when we were in a bull market. Um, and I think the saying goes, and I, I do think this is true. I think it's easier to hold 
during a um, during a bear market than it is to hold during a bull market because during a bull market people will they'll, they'll see these gains they'll see these gains they'll keep going and then they see like a 30 percent correction and then they just sell everything you know close the book and and then a couple days later they see the price started going up again they they jump back into the market because they they don't want to miss out on on these potential gains and then the price corrects and then the, the cycle just repeats and then the original smart money became the dumb money and the dumb money is well i mean it's it's the reason why other people get rich um in 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 short so you know considering considering these moves where we where we have these shorter term moves Imagine if instead of worrying about these these short term moves in the market, all you looked at was the moving average or even the twenty week, and you just said, "You know what i'm I'm in this for the long haul um, and uh, you know i wanna I wanna uh, focus on accumulating my position during twenty nineteen and twenty twenty you know we published videos in twenty nineteen and we said we think 2019 and 2020 are going to be the years to accumulate Bitcoin. Um, and I think so far, I think, you know, for, for most people accumulating, if you're dollar cost averaging your buys, and if you're, do if you're doing it dynamically with respect to, say, some like the risk metric that I publish or some other metric that you follow on your own, then you would be doing quite well at this point. So again, I, I think 2019, 2020, the years to accumulate Bitcoin, and when you look back, if you can, if you can, you know, in your mind, look forward to the end of 2020. You know, pretend we're like we're in December. You want to be able to look back and say, okay, I, I accumulated this Bitcoin and I got it for the best price as possible. I'm gonna go back and look. Okay, I saw that I bought it at, at this price in, in February. Maybe I bought it at a lower price in March. Maybe a higher price in April. But ultimately, I was able to, you know accumulate as much Bitcoin as I can and I feel good about myself going into 2021 and 2022. You know, that's my goal. This is not financial advice, but this that's my goal and I think a lot of people tend to share that goal, but they get stuck checking checking the price of Bitcoin every every five minutes. Um, so again if we if we actually plot the 100 week moving average on here, um, you know it tells a, again, no surprise, a similar story. So we're increasing um, uh, going into the halving, we have a, a, a bull market followed by a bear market, and then we start increasing again, kind of going into the halving, maybe right after the halving, um, we have a bull market, and then a bear market, and the bear markets are kind of hard to see, because remember, it's a 100-week moving average, um, so it's kind of over, it's over two years, and generally speaking, over two years, the price of Bitcoin doesn't just go down. Um, it, it might go down, but then it, it usually it usually corrects back upwards. Um, so again, you can see that we are, you know, it's possible that we're going to do the same thing where we, we go into the halving and then we just um, continue a, another leg up on our on our logarithmic um, on our logarithmic curve um, and potentially, you know, moving up. Uh, I, I don't know exactly, but I mean, I've published enough stuff on this um, for you guys to, to know where, where I stand. Um, but again, this is this is to show the macro level picture of, of all of this so that you aren't you aren't like stuck, um, stuck in the weeds. Um, so again, here's the price. It's pretty noisy. And just think about think about probably all the sleepless nights you've had over, you know, the last maybe four or five years worrying about these moves. Um, and you know, ultimately, what we care about is is this move up here, and and maybe some other moves if we can if we can um, if the risk indicator tells us to say okay sell, and or maybe it's a good time to sell depending on on what your what your risk tolerance is, and then if it does drop to the twenty week moving average, then I think you know for me anyways that'll probably trigger a buy um, once we can confirm the twenty week moving average is our support for the bull market. Um, if you guys like this content, again, please subscribe to the channel. I do have a Patreon account. Um, we publish stuff uh, like, you know, we'll, we'll publish charts like this pretty regularly. Um, I know I've made YouTube videos on a lot of these charts, but to give you an idea, um, this is, you know, this is just a simple log log curve. Um, here is a, a time derivative of, of the moving average. So this is actually a time derivative of the, the 50 week moving average. Um, and you can see that, you know, each bull market 
it it does decrease or each each market cycle it does decrease um but after after it moves back above zero which means it's it's going from decreasing to increasing it stays that way until the next bear market um here's our, our market cycle roi here's our, our primary logarithmic regression band which historically shows when is a good time to buy Bitcoin. Um, and this is that risk indicator I, I was talking about. So you'll find all of this, um, you'll find updates on these things and more on, on the, um, the Patreon uh, website. So if you guys wanna check it out, it's just patreon.com slash into the cryptoverse. Uh, we do have a patron only chat room uh, with about 60, 70 members, something like that. Um, and we do provide all these updates for people and it's only $30 a month and, and you'll get all sorts of macro level updates on, on Bitcoin and Ethereum um, and a few other coins we've covered, uh, Litecoin, uh, XRP. We, we do sometimes look at, at Chainlink um, as well as a few others. Nano is one. Um, so check it out if you guys, if you guys want. Um, and then again, uh, if, you, if you're interested in Ethereum, I am publishing Ethereum letters in, in a few days um, from now which will be similar to Bitcoin letters, um, which if you haven't seen Bitcoin letters before, if you wanna see it, um, just go to intothecryptoverse.com and go to reports. Um, and once you go to reports, you just click on Bitcoin. We have reports for some other coins as well. Um, first edition, because there's only one, we published this in January. And then here you can see, um, uh, it's actually a 21 page, um, report on Bitcoin with all sorts of all sorts of charts. We look at the ROI. Um, you know, here's the one year, two year, three year, and four year ROI. You can even see that the that the four year ROI has never has hard. It's you know you'd be hard pressed to find a time where your your four year ROI isn't at least 10x, which is amazing to think about. I mean, there are times where it would have only been maybe like 5x or so, but you're running four year ROI historically is um, around uh i would you know at a low it would be five to ten x which is quite impressive um we you know we published these other roi charts we looked at time denominated rois uh, we looked at um you know market cycle bottom to the peak we talk about all this in the report we talk about the possibility of a four-year cycle um we talk about the risk indicator and various ways you can manage your risk by buying and selling sometimes selling um, the same amount at each risk level, sometimes selling dynamically, where maybe you sell 10% at, at one risk level and 20% at another. We looked at logarithmic regression, um, looking at these log lines and, and dropping down on the log lines. Um, we've looked at fitting it to non-bubble data. Um, you can see that here. And then this is just a metric that takes the relative error between the, the price and this primary logarithmic regression band. Um, we looked at volatility. And moving average derivatives comparisons with the S&P 500. Um, we do have a website called Into the Crypto Charts, which has around three or four charts that are live updated, but we're still working on getting that up. Um, and we talked about the total cryptocurrency market cap. And of course, we talked about some of the Twitter polls. So if you guys want to check that out, you can find that at intothecryptoverse.com slash Bitcoin letters. It's free. Um, we're going to have Ethereum letters launching in a few days. It's not going to be quite as long as Bitcoin letters. Um, maybe it'll be... 14 pages, 15 pages, something like that. Um, but it is going to be quite extensive. So if you guys do find that valuable, then just check out the $50 a month tier and you will get a subscription to Ethereum Letters, um, which will be released in a few days, a subscription to Altcoin Letters, which will be re released in um, sometime in March. And of course, you'll get everything in the previous tier. So all these different updates, access to the, to the private Telegram channel, and of course, subscription to future editions of Bitcoin Letters. Um, so I just wanted to, to put that plug in because I am trying to trying to grow this. Or I'm trying to um, really get people on board with this macro level um, movement in the market, and and to get people thinking about about long term moves and how you can how you can manage your portfolio in a way that doesn't have you pulling your hair out um, every every ten minutes. So. Um, please check it out if you get a chance and I will uh, talk to you next time. Again, uh, do subscribe to the channel if anything because I do post almost daily videos that you, can, you guys can follow along on. Um, and uh, we will be looking at some new coins coming up here soon. I, I, I did carry out a, a poll um, where I looked at uh, what coins people are, are interested in 
on my channel. Um, some of the some of the big ones uh, that I'm not currently covering, I, I will start covering. Um, XTZ is one. Um, I'll probably cover uh, uh, BNB. Um, I will probably cover. Uh, um, a few others, you know, I mean it ultimately I'll, I'll probably cover um, basic attention token just because I, I do sometimes use that browser and it's it is a good way to, to tip people that I like that I like watching. Um, so brave if you haven't checked it out, you know go check that one out. Um, and then uh, yeah, there are a few others we'll get to them, but these will be published in altcoin letters. so we'll have a, an extensive analysis of most of the coins in the top 10. Um, as well as some sprinkled throughout maybe the top uh, 25, maybe a couple in the top 40 or, or so. But uh, they're all going to be within, like, say, the top 50, I think. Uh, I'm not going to go below that because I, I think it's it's pointless to, to continue going too much further down uh, for the most part. And then um, uh, and, and then we will be talking about uh, micro caps in, 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 in later videos as well. Um, right now I'm just trying to... Um, grow things, grow the audience, and, and see what people want. Uh, so that'll wrap it up for this video. I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.